Welcome to Within You, the podcast where we explore the unknown, the liminal space. As you navigate between now and what's next. Yo soy Viviana Carrasco. I am a mindset mentor. <laughs> She's looking at me and I like. <laughs> Yo soy Viviana Carrasco, wisdom teacher, mindset mentor, and transformational guide based right here in Funky Town, which is Fort Worth, Texas. Today is such an exciting episode. I'm, I'm super happy that you've joined me. I am with Green Booty Yoga, Heather Williams, otherwise known as Heather Williams. So. If after the interview you'd like to go out and find her magic, connect with her, uh, you can reach out to her on Facebook. We're going to be talking today, we're having a conversation, we love to be in dialogue, on a book that we just um, journeyed together with in um, within university called The Way of the Rose, The Radical Path of the Divine Feminine Hidden in the Rosary. Thank you so much, Heather, for joining me today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be talking to you. That's my favorite. I'm your favorite or it's your favorite? <laughs> You're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally just pulling out compliments. Heather and I haven't rehearsed this. We haven't actually even really talked about what we're going to say. We really just wanted to have a kind of off the cuff conversation about our experience with the way of the rose and have you join us. So where would you like to begin, Heather? Gosh, I don't know. I was like a little nervous all day thinking, oh, I, I wish you would send me like an outline so I could have good answers <laughs> prepared and sound like intelligent, you know, in my in my conversation. But I don't know. I think it was just I love book club because it brings you to books that maybe you wouldn't um, explore otherwise. And even after you were like, oh, this is a book we're going to read, I really kind of was like a little bit against it for a minute. Like I found myself like, ah, I'm not going to read that right now. I'm just going to like wait a minute. And then once I started reading, I really just got like sucked in, like super drawn in, um, very interested in it. So I don't know where to begin. It was really kind of a magical experience for me, I think. Thank you for sharing. Well, I think we should begin right there with not having an outline and not knowing what's going to happen is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for your bravery. And the other thing that I just want to point out, especially for listeners that come back to the podcast over and over again, is this is a running theme and everything. Like, I think by you and I just having a dialogue with each other, just kind of like just going with whatever is in the moment. Yeah. And I think people will be able to tell when we let go of that. Oh, we're performing. People are listening to us and we're actually just in conversation, really sharing our experiences. So I want folks to listen for that, but also to know that it's okay to be where you were with like, I want to sound smart. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. like, I'm like, oh, that's what, this is how I think all the time. I'm not scattered at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I actually was very resistant to it, too, which is interesting because I am a cradle Catholic and I obviously love the rosary and I love the Virgen. But it just there were parts I just was nervous about it, but I kept getting called to it, you know, and it kept beckoning me. So I basically like dared it. And I'm like, OK, show me your stuff. All right. Like I'm going to go there, but show me. So in what way were you resistant to it? I'm curious. Yeah, I don't know why at all, because I also am a cradle Catholic for sure. Like I'm the first, you know, my dad was born in Ireland, like I'm the first, well, England, but I'm so I'm like the first born here. So very, very Catholic, very like, I don't have any negativity towards Catholicism at all. You know, my son went to private Catholic school till eighth grade, <laughs> you know, like I believe in all of the things but I think and I do and I love like all the traditions and the ritual like I love ritual you know it's so calming right when you're like I know exactly what's going to happen like I know exactly what I'm supposed to say next like that's so amazing and but I think we, since I kind of started seeking like more truth I feel like rather than like religion to me has become a very um stale I think like or kind of like part of the patriarchy quote unquote you know that's like controlling everyone rather than like I feel like it's religion has taken like this beautiful natural free thing and like turned it into like this is what you do and these are the things you believe and if you believe this then you're not you know a true catholic or if you believe this you know then you're not you don't follow true judaism or all the things that separate I feel like are kind of 
surrounding religion. And that's, I think that's why I was kind of resistant. Cause I was like, oh, I don't want to get pulled back into like, oh no, I'm Catholic. You know, that's what I'm doing. Ah, mm -hmm. So I think that's where my resistance came. And this book wasn't that at all. It wasn't about religion at all. Yeah. And that's a good point. I actually wrote this down in the notes is that the way of the rose is not affiliated with the Catholic church or any other religious institution. Um, there is a way of the rose.org where if you're interested in learning to pray the rosary or the novenas that they, the authors guide you there. The authors are actually an ex Buddhist monk who experienced an apparition of the lady. I call her the Virgen. It's interesting how I didn't want to read it. And then I was all over it. The same with you. Like it pulled me in. Yeah. I just devoured it after that. Yeah. And one of the things that I actually realized after reading it and after going through the entire book club experience in within university is that one of the things that I felt compelled to do when I was moving out of my major transformation, you know, I don't know, six or seven years ago is I actually created my own novena, my own like bracelet rosary. It was a very grounding thing for me. And I had forgotten that I had done that. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. I wrote down a couple of pages because I remember one of the things that inspired me to host you on the podcast is on our forum. You're like, so what was your favorite part? You know, and I was like, there's so much. Yeah. But let's talk about it. Because I wrote this whole big thing and then like nobody commented. And I'm like, seriously, I felt like super vulnerable. <laughs> I'm all blah, 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 like all this stuff. And then nothing. Crickets. I was all, oh, I should, like, is, is that like super unpopular? <laughs> Isn't it funny how like any like collection of humans pulls us into that like social thing? Yes. Well, then like then a month later, after one month, I'm like, so Vivian, what's your favorite part? I'm like, no one's saying anything. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things that's interesting about our crew, right? Like, but there's a lot of dialogue when we're like in person, not in person, but like, you know, talking through yeah. kind of thing. So... A month later, you're like, Vivian, back in here. <laughs> I was like, hello, I totally wrote this like long drawn out thing. Well, and you also, one of the things that I remember is like you had that beautiful, beautiful experience where you actually built, like you created your own rosary after the book club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. I think I just was like, I was so moved by, he kept saying, you know, like that he kept finding like rosaries here and there. And I have rosaries that have been like passed down. I have no idea where they are. Like I cannot find them anywhere. And I was like, look, and obviously they should be in my jewelry box or they should, you know, in my underwear drawer. Uh, right. But <laughs> they're not in any of those places. So I'm like, <laughs> shit, I have to make my own then. And so I just found it like really, I just was like super called to like make my own. So I kind of made it like Mala style and, you know, with like the knots and my friend helped me do it. It was so, it was really cathartic, I think. Me. How beautiful. So I have a page written down that I wanted to read because it was one of my favorite passages. So I'm kind of like answering your question, like in person, real life. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm ready. I've been waiting like a while. Like a <laughs> It's been more than a month, right? <laughs> I love you so much. Okay. So this is from page 105, which is the chapter. Oh my God. That's the one I wrote on mine. Shut up. In the thing, if you go look at it, yeah, because I pulled it up because I was like, okay, that was totally page 105. Actually, I'm not going to lie. It says favorite passage. I didn't put yours. So it is. do you want to read it since it's your favorite one? <laughs> I don't care. Do you want me to? Okay. Yeah. So page 105. So it says, follow me and I will lead you to the treasure that is real. It is a very short journey and its direction is down. Back to your mother, back to basics, back to the earth from which you came. Once you find that treasure, you will know that a whole lifetime will not be sufficient to spend it. You haven't just been given all that you need. You have been given more than you could ever use. The earth is generous. Men are not. It is time to choose whom you wish to serve. And I just thought that was so beautiful because, you know, in my kind of seeking of the quote unquote truth that, that I can find, you know, it just seems like we've been taken out of nature. So kind of systematically. And so I just love that this really kind of brought me back to like, Oh, I'm not 
following something crazy, you know, like, cause I do still like doubt, like, Oh my God, am I like going down like a dark path or am I making the wrong choices to like, you know, kind of worship like nature a little bit more and, you know, like speak to goddesses rather than just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well i'm right yeah i just wanted to tell you i'm right there with you like i you know i talk to my grandma like i have angels like i, I literally call on my adult sons like call on their guardian angels to like take point you know for sure and i remember i feel like maybe it's because we're both catholic that we feel that because sometimes i'm like i'm happy that i don't think that god is some white dude with a beard in the sky like being really mean to me or watching me <laughs> you know and that my experience, my relationship with divinity is a lot different now. It's a lot more nurturing. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more caring for me instead. Yeah. And that's an evolution. And so my own experience has actually gone from like that patriarchy into more of a mother figure, which is more beautiful to me. Yeah. Because I don't think that God is gendered, right? Like, I don't think that God is man or woman. Like, that's just kind of silly it just that is like the men who took over the church and were like we're going to tell you everything so clearly god is a man like no not true at all and then <laughs> also like god is not something i'm seeking constantly you know like in Catholicism, it's something i'm constantly trying to appease i'm ch constantly trying to like seek his approval seek you know like am i doing okay and you're always not right you're always just dying and going to hell like no matter what like <laughs> you are like screwed <laughs> you're screwed you're never good enough yeah like you're not you're burning in hell like today and so, <laughs> like, then to like find you know like goddess religions and you know like paganism you know more natural you know god is within you like you're not searching for god and divinity divinity is the spark that's like within your body all the time and that feels so much more true mm -hmm. you know if you like sit with it and really feel into it you're like yeah of course that's of course i'm not searching and i'm not trying to always be like please love me exactly there's a catholic i don't think he's a i guess he could be called a catholic mystic he's more contemporary his name is oh my gosh he's an indian catholic and i love him i can't think of his name but one of the things that i remember him saying in the book that i read that he wrote is he talks about people looking at the tools that Jesus gave us and just putting them on a pedestal instead of actually using them. Yeah. Right. Like love and compassion. Right. And inclusion. <laughs> right? right. You know, those basic things. And one of the things that really, really opened me up to the whole experience of well, and here's the other thing that's different between I think what you're talking about is spirituality and what we are sort of dancing around and that's religion. Religion and so gives us answers. Like they give us a structure and they give us answers. And spirituality is us asking the questions yeah. and not seeking but looking within for what's our truth. And our spirituality is personal to us. And I think that's what I've enjoyed most over the last few years. Yeah, I agree. That's true. And I think that religion is definitely, it definitely has its place, right? Because it teaches, you know, like, as, like, young people, you're stupid, and you really need to have, like, that kind of, you know, boundaries and set of rules and, like, know this is how you go, rather. Maybe not. I mean, kids are smarter than anyone gives them credit for, for sure. Oh, I agree with that. But, you know, one of the things that I think that, that our religion, Catholicism, gave us that I'm grateful for is those rituals that you talked about, those mm -hmm. ceremonies, those rites of passage, like quinceanera and, and our baptism and our confirmation. And, you know, us as human beings, we like, we need that. Yeah. We need structure to feel safe. And I know when I walk into a cathedral, like it's like my body breathes and I relax because I feel that I'm surrounded by love. Yeah. And there's so much beauty I actually have a stained glass window in my house because I just love them so much. <laughs> I'm going to read my favorite passage now. Yes, please. It's from page 234. And this is the chapter that's called I Will Carry You. I'm going to read the whole thing. I think initially I had, oh, here's the, it's a little part of it. I found it. The cord that once connected you to your mother now connects you to the world, which is also your mother. It is as if I have moved you from one hip to the other when you were born. Same mother, different hip. I am carrying you just the same. The idea of 
being carried again. Like it feels good, like nurturing, like motherhood. I just, that connected with me so much that I just wanted to share that, that one. Yeah. I love that one. I love it because these, you know, and I always keep in mind, like when I'm reading a book, like it's not gospel, right? It's just this like man's um, opinion or whatever. But then a lot of the stuff that was said was really beautiful. And, you know, it's not like contrived. It doesn't seem like, but I feel like these are the things that she was actually supposed to have said to him that he like transcribed. Yeah. The little parts in italics, right? Yeah. Which I was like, oh my God, that's so amazing. It is poetic. So one of the things that I guess that brings to mind for me is like poetry, music, all of these beautiful things in the world, like we're meant to enjoy them. Like there's so much part of what this whole message I think gave me is that the joy is there for us to enjoy, like, and the caring is there for us and like the caring and then the nurturing, like the base brain or the base human stance is to be afraid to be fearful to look for negative to be on the lookout you know very sort of hunter ish but there aren't any lions and tigers around anymore right right like this is the time for us to just like enjoy like chill and to we bring more to the world by experiencing that beauty and sharing in that joy than we ever will in a state of fear i think it is where people begin though you know i'm reading this other book the body keeps score and it's all about like trauma held in the body and like all these horrible things and so it really does matter like your childhood how you're if you were safe as a child like whether or not you'll feel safe as an adult so i think that's a big part of it too and then so i don't want to knock religion entirely because i think in a lot of situations it's very beautiful and people just want like consistency and concrete and like this is what's happening no totally and like I am a practicing Catholic and I like to say practicing because I'm always going to practice because I'm never going to be perfect yeah yeah but I'm not saying that that our religions are bad either I'm just saying that we have an opportunity to experience our spirituality on a personal level yes right like we have an opportunity to literally experience it like in our body, right? Yeah. Through our movements. Like one of the things that has opened up for me in the last few years is I used to think that praying had to be on my knees with my hands, right? In that prayer stance. And like, I will pray laying down. I will pray in Shavasana. I will pray like in the bath. Like prayer for me is like much more integrated into my daily living than it was when I was young because it's become a part of my practice, right? Yeah. And that's what I love about too. Like, and I don't remember who said it, but how they say like to pray incessantly, like that we should pray, not, we should always be praying in our minds constantly. And that's one of like the threads of everything else, right? Um, Like Hinduism, like chanting, all the things, like you should just always be like with your mantra so that your mind has something to hold on to and it's not like spinning out and, you know, as somebody with like high anxiety, that's something that's so helpful for me. Uh, it's a huge tool to have something to <laughs> constantly be like, oh, you're starting to like get a little spun on this thing. So let's just bring it back to this right here. Totally. And honestly, when I stopped wearing jewelry during during the pandemic, but yes. my standard jewelry, I wonder why we did that, by the way. Because I don't want goopy nastiness to get on my stuff. Oh, well, that's true. That's why I did it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know why I did it. I just was like, <laughs> no jewelry. Except for my necklace because <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's like my protection. <laughs> <laughs> But I wanted to say, like, when I was wearing jewelry before all of this, and when I first built that novena out of a bracelet, I would actually remember touching it or turning the the stones in my fingers. And it was a very much a grounding effect for me. Like, it was very much like um, bringing me back to where I needed to be. So that's exactly how I used it. And that is something I loved about this book. I feel like things always come, right? Like, we're always given the answer. So I'm always asking like am I doing the wrong thing am I making wrong choices please you know guide me please lead me down the right path 
and, you know, quote unquote, right, you know, like the path I'm supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. And then this book comes. And so it's like, oh, you are on the right path, (laughs) like everything you're experiencing and kind of like discovering newly for yourself is, of course, not new. It's this age old things, right? Like the lady has been appearing to people through time, you know, all throughout time, time innumerable or whatever. And it's just really beautiful to be like, oh, awesome. So we're like, we're good. You're happy. And yeah, (laughs) I'm not like following some crazy dark demon. (laughs) I actually like that was one of the things that I wrote down about um, my overall favorite thing. And it was the realization that the Blessed Mother has been with us across the ages all over the world. Yeah. Like that was something that I was like, wow. You know? Yeah. I thought that was really cool. And I do follow them on Facebook. The way of the road. Yeah. And they had posted this cool like cartoon and it was like Peter and Jesus, I think, or or Peter and somebody were standing at the gate and they were like, I don't know, talking to some person. And then like in the background, you can see like Mary and she's just got, has like a ladder and she's like pulling people like through the window. (laughs) (laughs) And Peter's like, yeah, that's his mom. Like she, you can always get in through her. And I was like, oh shit, that's amazing. You know, so... I was like, okay, so even if the patriarchy is it like your thing, you know, Mary is always there to like bridge that gap and be like, I'm here with open arms all the time. All the time. Yeah. And I don't know why as humans, we are very resistant to be like, oh, you're there all the time. Great. I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. So stupid. I do that all the time. All right. Well, I'm going to go do this other thing. I'll see you in a minute. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I have this other page turned down. So if you have a page that, that you... And I don't know why it's turned down and I actually don't even know what I'm going to read right now. So let's see what happens. It's from page 237 and the chapter is called A Great Wind. It's the second paragraph I'm going to start with. The birds know where to go in a storm. The earthworms love a storm. Animals understand the violence of a storm and therefore have no fear of it. But people will rush about. My advice to you now is to find a place that steadies you a place that gives you courage, wisdom, and perspective. Each of you knows the place I speak of. Each of you has a place to go that centers you because that place is your center. This is something that I actually hear a lot of people ask for and that I actually questioned if it exists. And that's this unshakable center, right? This unshakable place. And now I recognize in the past, I guess, when I heard like the center, like, I didn't know if it existed, but now I know, like, you know how you talked about the malas bringing you back and the mantras, like coming back to my center is for me, the eye of the storm, Yeah, like being in the storm, but being in peace and that it is possible. I guess I doubted that it could happen, but it's happened to me. So, (laughs) oh, this is one that I really loved and it's um, 205. And she says, I'm speaking to you from an older place. The reason I have chosen to appear here at this time and in this way is not to speak from outside of the Catholic Church. I need to speak from before it. Mm. So that's on 205. And that one really, I was kind of, I think after I read that, I really kind of took like like a couple of days and just a little and be like, okay, like that's so beautiful. Mm hmm. And also so heartbreaking that like something so pure and easy was kind of like hijacked a little bit. Yeah. But I love that. But, but that goes back to the right that she's always been there. She's always going to be there. Well, one of the things that I have realized, and I don't know where I read it, but I've been reading a lot about Catholicism in search of like truth, like, right? Mm-hmm. Like the truth. And it's funny, like, if I go back to like the Desert Fathers and like before, like right around 300 AD, like you can actually track where the church took paths mm-hmm. to do this instead of that, to interpret it this way instead of that way, you know? So I've been lately over the last few years just super comforted in the as close to the beginning as possible, right? Like remembering the very beginning. And one of the words that I um, sort of weave throughout everything is the word metanoia, because what I read was, is that, so obviously Jesus spoke Aramaic when he was on earth and the words um, repent 
actually came from the original metanoia, which means to change your way of thinking and to soften your heart. It's not so much like that whole turn away from sin because sin, it's more about opening your heart and transforming your mind as the new life, right? And I that really opened me up too. It's so beautiful. One of the things that I just like, I felt stupid to not know, but like I, when I was younger, I literally thought Christ was Jesus's last name. And it's not, <laughs> obviously, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute though that's not stupid that's adorable <laughs> but there's so much evolution i think as being cradle catholics that we have to like come back mm -hmm. to our tradition and really learn it from its own truth and not just from you know the experience we might have had by walking into mass and going to confession and you know going through the steps without recognizing the beauty of it from its history yeah do you have another part in the book that you loved? There is, but I can't, I don't, I don't know where it's at. It's the one about the intersection between holy and, well, there's so many, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> I was kind of flipping through today and I was like, oh, that's right. I love that one too. The whole, like, especially right now, because the veil is thinning, right? So yesterday was fall equinox and, you know, like, so now we're st starting to go into like winter and hibernation. And so I feel like, I don't know why it's that, I guess because of Halloween, right? And like All, all Hallows Eve and All Saints Day is coming up. So we're thinking about, you know, like the dead a lot. But I like on 157, she says, the dead wish nothing more than to reassure the living. The dead are always disappointed and surprised when people look away from them. They are blossoms, the dead. What looks like a dead body on this side of the veil is a flower on the other. I think that's so lovely to be like, we should always be in communion with our ancestors, you know? We should always, like, have our, you know, we should put our our flowers out for them and put our pictures out for them and, you know, always, like, invite them to, you know, that you always have a place. You can always come over here. You don't have to... Yeah, that's another place in my own evolution, too. I used to think like, you know, dead was bad, right? Yeah, it's scary. And they're... Over the last couple of years, I actually started doing an altar for Day of the Dead and having pictures and putting things out. And I didn't grow up with it. And so I didn't feel like I would do it right. But then I was just like, really like, screw everybody. I'm doing it my own way. And this is going to be what it is. And I love... <laughs> calling on my ancestors and, and feeling my grandmothers and just asking them for help and to hold me. It's just really changed the way that I experience um, living and dead together. Yes. In that thing that you read, Heather, right before it, it says, but most of all, whenever we pray the rosary, we can remember that the dead hear us, love us, and are ready to offer us their wisdom. For it is the dead who know at last what life is really for. Yeah, so terrible. Just like the old, the when we're old, we you know would have appreciated our youth better. <laughs> like when we're dead, we appreciate our life better. <laughs> you know, like we're always like one step behind. One step behind. But I think like doing this and like reading things like this, it like brings to our attention, like hey, you know, you're paying attention to the wrong things. Maybe, maybe not. But you know, oftentimes like we're kind of forced to. Like, I have to go to work. I have to feed my dogs. I have to feed my family. I have to, I sent my dogs first because like, I probably would worry more about them. Like the people would be like, figure it out. Like, go, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but like the dogs are like, no, they can't. That's not happening. Not yet. Not yet. So one of the things that I love when we do a book club is one of our seasonal journeys is that the conversations that we share with each other, right? in our different, when we gather in sacred circle together. And for the life of me, I really cannot remember anything specific from that. But I think that's one of the things that also brings the experience of the books to life is when we talk about our experiences and share them, right? Like the one call where, you know, everyone showed their rosaries. Yeah. That was beautiful. Really cool. <laughs> yeah. Another one, you know, this is my favorite. I show this all the time. When you understand where the words dirty and holy intersect, you have found the secret to everything. And you know, like, yeah, right? You remember that one? Because, like, <laughs> yeah, I do now. What page is that on? That one's on 102. Because, you know, everything is like sexual to me and like 
I just think a 15 year old boy, I guess, mm-hmm. which is a terrible, like, I, and I hate to like put it that way. It's like, no, I think like a, you know, a 40 year old woman that's like, no, sex is beautiful and wonderful. And I love it. And we should all be having sex and no one should be saying it's a bad thing. And then to be like, Oh, maybe Mary actually said this. <laughs> maybe she's like, you know, like what you're, you know, saying dirty is not dirty. You know, these are gifts. I remember, oh my God, this was such a juicy conversation when we had it all together. I'm going to read it again. It's on page 102. When you understand where the words dirty and holy intersect, you will have found the secret to everything. That was such a beautiful conversation. Yeah. And that chapter is called Sex, Death, and Roses. (laughs) That's so good. And that's one of the things that I guess growing up too is feeling like... Like I'm grateful. So I'll I'll turn it around a little bit and say that I'm grateful now as a grown woman with grown children that I can experience sex as holy, right? As sacred and not have any reservations around it like at all, which is I'm so grateful for. A sentence in page 100 as in the beginning of that chapter that says the people experience love directly through marriage, sex, family and children. So it's actually a spiritual state, right? It's a spiritual thing. And for us to think that it's dirty, right? Yeah. That was such a juicy conversation. I wish we could have recorded it. I mean, we can record it, but we don't record things anymore because, yeah, we don't. Because it's fear to just be like, oh, no one's ever going to hear this. And I can just say whatever I want. Yeah. I've always been very confused with the idea that sex is dirty. Like it's never, ever, like I've never thought it was dirty. And I've always been like, why would you say that? Like something is wrong with you that you would think that or say that. But I am glad that it was really presented to me as sacred. You know, like it's not that your body is very sacred and that who you share your energy with is very important because you're you really are during sex there's alchemy that's happening there's mad like literal magic and your souls are i fully 100 percent believe like that our souls are intertwining and that you know like we're sharing parts of our like physical parts but also like spiritual parts of ourselves and then you carry that person that you've opened up to for many years i think Um, So I think it is important to treat it as sacred, but never like dirty. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, and in addition to like the spiritual and the alchemy, like the chemical, like on a biological level, right? Mm -hmm. I need sex literally like I need air so much. You know, like if I start feeling ungrounded or I get really irritated with my husband, if I'm like, come on, like I just need I have some kind of like, I need to move this energy. Like, it's not helping me at all. I'm going to need you to help me to like transfer this into something else. And that is beautiful. Otherwise, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Not the hurting part, but. <laughs> right. no, no. You know, you're like, come on. Yeah. So it's not that you want to have sex with just anybody. You want to have sex with like your person. And, you know, it's so important. Because it is so beautiful and it is so amazing. Like, it's like if you have this, like, you know, this beautiful buffet in front of you, why are you not going to that? You know what I'm saying? Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. I don't know if it's, you know, because Latinas have a persona or a, what is it? I don't even know the language around it right now, but like, like a stereotype? A stereotype, yeah. Yeah. But I've always enjoyed really like making that. It's holy, it's sacred, and it's yours. Like, it's a gift. Like, if you're experiencing it, oh, my God, and then birth. Yes. That is an alchemy, like, from you know, literally from, you know, into womanhood, from, like, made into motherhood, you know? That's, you know, like, the triple goddess, you know, uh, maiden, mother, and crone. And so, like, you're literally, like, changing to a whole nother point in your life. So it's, like, terrifying and exciting. That transformation or that movement is easier for me than moving from to crone. And then whatever happens after crone. You know what I mean? Like... Because it's so physical, it was easier to sort of like move into that identity. Yeah. And speaking of identities, for me, I don't know if it's the same for you, but I think that my persona or my evolution happens about every seven to 10 years. Like I can 
like there it's almost like layers of me shed and like the deeper parts of me are able to like show themselves and come out to the world yes for sure it's something to do with astrology i'm not really good at it but something like every seven years completes like a new like another cycle i didn't know that yeah i don't know a lot about it but um when i've talked to like to some of my teachers they're like oh you know you're completing this seven year cycle that started like june whatever and I'm like I can't remember back that far. <laughs> like, what was happening then? I'm like, who knows? Probably like I was, you know, still in survival mode, you know, rather than. But I do feel like I'm kind of the whole Crohn thing for me is starting to not be like so bad, mm. you know, because it is rather physical, right? Like my skin is changing, you know. My husband and I are talking. Like tomorrow's our 27th anniversary, so like we're. <laughs> So we've been talking a lot about, well, I've been talking and then he's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been like, it's so weird. Like how you're, you know, like when I look at my body, I'm like, oh, that's just interesting. Like I try to stay super curious about it and not like judgy, but just like, oh, that's so, it's so interesting that like my leg skin looks like that or you know, like, oh, and I sit cross-legged like this you know, there's cellulite there, like what is happening? What's going on with the body? So that's really, it's a trip. I love that you're curious about it. I actually am really enjoying the wrinkles that are showing up. Yeah. Because I used to, when I was younger, wanted to be a quote grown up. <laughs> like, and I never knew when that was going to happen. Like I didn't, even after I had kids and got married, I'm like, I still don't feel like a grown up, right? Yeah. And so what I'm giving myself is that these wrinkles are like, they've shown the growth that I've gone through. So now I'm technically a grown up. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm totally owning them. That JFK said that the first that he that you're an adult when you lose both of your parents, because you don't have like anything to fall back on, right? It's just like all you. I'm like, oh. So that's always stuck with me. Or JFK Jr., sorry. But yeah. That's what he had said. I guess I'm not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not. It, that's good. Me either. I have, I'm have. i lucky to have both my parents right now. Yeah, I do as well. So the way of the rose, the radical path of the divine feminine hidden in the rosary. I want to talk about, before we close up, because we I don't know if you know, but can you believe it's almost been an hour? But we can talk like that forever, like. You and I, yeah, we have that. <laughs> we have the gift of gap for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like an, its own alchemy, right? Like it was five minutes ago. I wanted to go back to how we both felt resistance and actually some of the other ladies felt resistance to the book. And we didn't know why, right? Right. So I want to encourage anyone that sort of is curious about the way of the rose and exploring the divine feminine in the rosary, like... It is not religious and it's not a religion like and the readings are just they pull you in and they really speak to your heart, in my opinion. Yeah, it has a poetry to it almost. Yeah. And the author, he neither of them were. I think she was Catholic as a child or something that was really resistant to it. And then he was never Catholic. And so it's just interesting that he that they both were really like, OK, this is happening. And she like physically appeared to him, mm -hmm. which I'm like, I'm not, I, I don't know. That's a little bit like, that's a big responsibility. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like partially you're like, yeah, I'd love that. And then the other, you're like, I don't know. Right. Like I imagine like one of the places that I have on my bucket list is um, going to Mexico city to see the Tilma. Yes. And I imagine like him, like that was an apparition too, right? I don't know. Like, I can't imagine the experience of it. Like, it's so big. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that you and I can remember, like, hints of it, right? Like, you feel the peace or you feel like... I remember being in one church in Dallas, and it was the first time that I had been there. And I believe it, it's the Cathedral of the Virgen Maria. But the energy of the altar just like compelled me forward and when I went up like I just started crying it was just so beautiful mm -hmm. you know yeah but I super enjoy any time that we're in book club or whatever learning journey we're taking in within university and I wanted to thank you Heather for being so brave because I didn't give you an outline <laughs> 
and sharing some of the fun that we have in there. Oh, yeah. That's so awesome. For sure. I love it. I totally love it. I can't wait. What is our next book? Do you have a next book? I don't yet. You don't? I don't. Yeah. I don't know what our, our winter journey is going to be. Yeah. I know. None of the books I'm reading are like, are, I don't think they're like great, probably. Like compelling, you, right? No. A lot of them are like hard. Like the, the Body Keep Score is like difficult. I've had it for years and I've been reading it now for months. And I'm only like halfway through because it's so heavy. I have to be like, oh. I'm going to digest that for a minute. And I actually have that book and it's actually heavy. It's a big book. No, it's not terribly big. It's like about this. Oh, okay. I was thinking of a different one called Emotions. Oh, that's really. Right? <laughs> yeah, just hearing it, I'm like, oh, that's so much right there. I can't even imagine. So I do this work, you do this work. And I and earlier today, like I'm on my cycle, I was holding my belly and I was like, what is the emotion? I'm like, what am I feeling right now? What am I feeling like? How would I describe this? And I just couldn't even get to a word. Like I finally got just pain and like a tension almost like it, aren't emotions difficult. They're just sometimes difficult to sort of name, but we're going off on a tangent. So do you have any final words for the way of the rose? I think just that I love how it takes religion out of it um, altogether and that there's a connection to um, nature and to the natural world. I love that. And I love, for me, it was really kind of affirming that I'm, I haven't strayed the path and I'm not, you know, burning. (laughs) You're not burning. (laughs) Beautiful. Thank you. And I love that we get to talk about it together. Yes. Yeah. So If you've enjoyed our conversation, if you're interested in learning more about Within University, I encourage you to visit uh, VivianCarrasco.com or www.WithinUniversity.com or Google. You know, Google always works, right? Yes, for sure. (laughs) Either way, seek us out. You know, I can imagine, though, how hard it is to come into a circle that you're not a part of as a like a new person. Yeah. So do you want to speak to that really quick? If someone feels like, oh, you guys like know each other too well, coming in would be weird for me or I don't want to do that. I mean, I totally get it, especially like I sit circles sometimes that I've never been in. And there is there certainly is a camaraderie. But I think as women, like we're all really hoping to raise each other up and welcome, you know, each other in with open arms. Like we're all doing this work and on this path to really, um, to hold each other. Like no one, there's no room to be judgy or to make anyone feel like they don't belong there. Cause if you're there, you a hundred percent belong there. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And we absolutely, you know, like we need your magic. Like, you know, that's like, if you don't show up and don't share your magic with us, like we're really missing out on that experience. So that's on you for not um, joining us. (laughs) You're going to withhold yourself. (laughs) Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Heather, thank you so much. Again, if you want to visit, if you want to find Heather, you can find her on her Facebook page at the Green, I want to say Booty, 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 (laughs) Booty, Green Booty Yoga with Heather Williams. Because booty, like B-U-D-D-H-I, is like intuition. It means, you know, like to believe, you know, your intuition, to follow, you know, what how you feel. So, And green because it's my favorite and it's um, environmental. So thank you so, so much. No, thank you. I appreciate you joining. Until next time on the Within You podcast. We'll see you on the next episode. That's what I wanted to say. I don't know what I wanted to say. It's been a joy. <laughs> and being in conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Heather and I had such a great time. I have to share with you, I think I mentioned it during our, our conversation, but that is the first time that I have done a video podcast. Typically, I close my eyes and I really just tune into the conversation and it's a different kind of dance than it is to look at a beautiful shining light human who is smiling back at you. And all you want to do is really engage with that person. So it felt a little more fun and kind of off the cuff. And I really do hope you enjoyed that episode and enjoyed Heather and I sharing 
a bit of our experience. We did that journey in the spring and we were are recording it later. So it's not fresh on our minds, but it was so impactful and magical to us that we really just wanted to encourage you to check that book out and maybe see the rosary in a different way than you initially did or do. It is such a beautiful guide that we had so many wonderful experiences that came out of it. And oddly enough, the majority of us were resistant to it, but it kept calling to our hearts. I'm joining you at the end of this episode so that I can speak a little more, a bit more in detail about some of the things that we mentioned. The first one that I want to share with you is a note about Anthony DeMello. He's an East Indian Jesuit priest, psychotherapist, writer, public speaker, and he teaches through stories. He includes what I love about him are not just the stories and the way that he leads you to critical thinking, but also how he brings in both the teachings of the East and the West. So if you haven't heard of Anthony DeMello, I do have a couple of, at least one podcast that I've dedicated completely to his books. And I will actually make a note to put that into the show notes for you. The other thing that I think comes, I hope, comes across in my conversation with Heather is that there is, in my opinion and what I believe, an underlying reality, a constant that is the foundation of all the major world religions, and that is a call to fierce love. All the different traditions have unique approaches to God by whatever name you call her. But this is also about that, about not... So we have to recognize, we have to be aware of how our our mind and body unconsciously takes us places and it immediately creates an in-group and an out-group. So um, one of the things that I do by, or I do by intention and with conscious thought is to look at the underlying root of things because it's so easy to get caught up in, you know, us versus them or what I believe versus what you believe in. And I even remember one conversation with a family member where we were talking about distinctions in religion I just naturally surrendered to the to the conversation because of the love between us or the love I had hope I hope is between us and I said look every religion calls for us to love and once we get that right let's move on to the other tenets um uh, and I did that intentionally because getting love right is a you know moment to moment day to day endeavor so I did want to mention Anthony DeMello guide you to his work and also honestly mentioned Mary by Star. She's also a spiritual writer. My favorite thing about her is that she translates the Spanish Christian mystics. And we actually taking a, a peek at my book at my bookshelf, see if I can find her book. Because there it is, Wild Mercy. Wild Mercy is another book that we journeyed through in within university. So I encourage you, if that piques your interest, check her out. Check out Mary by Star. And then the other thing that I mentioned in the podcast that I know I didn't quite have my bearings around is the edges of Catholicism. So in 313 AD, the emperor Constantine ended the official persecution of Christianity and established it as the religion of the empire. So then it became Roman Catholicism. And the point that I was trying to make if I recall correctly, is that then we became the system. And prior to 313 AD, we were in the catacombs, they say, you know, we were underground, we were, you know, church was in our house, and and that sort of thing. So and spirituality days is an experience that I believe is within us that we bring out that you know, we see Christ everywhere. So I have grown so much in my understanding of my own tradition and in some of the ways that the institution or the system has evolved. And so that's what I was trying to bring to light. My personal, what I've recognized over the years is that I have a personal affinity towards Celtic Christianity because it is grounded in the natural world. And the Celtics, the Irish were sort of left alone. Um, So they merged. And that's the other thing I love about Catholicism is that it brings in the culture. You have to bring in the culture because we as humans have this deep. If we recognized how deep this was, some of the illusions would immediately fall away. So the deep, deep need to belong. And so Heather and I went to our edges, you know, and I think both of us in our own ways have really sort of 
explore that cultural limitation like where is that edge how do we stay inside the circle but at the edge so that we can explore and see how the differences actually reveal that we are the same so that's what i have for you i just wanted to come back to you with those resources with those tidbits of information and i encourage you to take a peek at the show notes in however way you're listening to the podcast and check out those resources if i can be of service to you please let me know you can reach me at vivian at viviancarasco.com be well much love